Go Man. A saga of the outback specially dramatized from the prize-winning novel of R.S. Porteous. <laughs> Cattle Man. Mr. McCready, wake up. It's time Stick for your injection. Go there. Hmm? Mm-hmm. What's that? Your injection? Where's Danny? Uh, tell Danny... Danny that... isn't here. You're in hospital. Hospital? Uh, who's in hospital? Here. Drink this. <coughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Trying to drown me. Oh, something. What's going on? Who are you? I'm the, the night sister. Oh, stone of crows. Don't anyone ever get any rest? Get this to it. You don't sound as if you were getting much. Tossing and turning and moaning and groaning. But this will settle you. Yeah, yeah, don't you go shoving no needles in me. I won't have it. Oh, it won't hurt a bit. Give me your arm now. No. Shh. You'll wake the other patients. I don't give a darn who I wake. I'm not having no needle and that's final. Oh, I heard you were a difficult patient. Difficult? How would you be if you was woke in the middle of the night and what potted in What are you dreaming the... about? Oh, none of your business. Oh, I just asked out of interest. Something to do with the war, wasn't it? Mm, it wasn't like no dream. It was like I was living through it again. Uh, me and Danny. Mm-hmm. Who's Danny? My son. Would you like to tell me about it? Mm, it's a long story. Well, I have plenty of time. Everyone else is asleep. Yeah, it was all over long before you was born, sister. Oh, it was the first war then? Yeah, the war to end all wars. Mm, that's what they said. When I think of those early days on the troop ship going over, or uh, Bella Claver, her name was, she was sunk in 16. Uh, it was only by the grace of God she never went down sooner. There we was with no escort and a German destroyer cutlass to ribbons. Yeah, a miracle it was. A miracle any of us ever lived to tell the story. And I reckon most of us would have been better off if we hadn't lived. We had to put into some African port for repairs. Oh, a rotten, stinking hole. Forget the name of it. Couldn't even point it out on the map. There we sat and waited and waited and waited. Oh, gotcha, you blighter. Oh, I don't know, boss. Looks like the only war we're going to fight against the flies. Yeah, you're probably right. I know who's going to win. Oh, they can't keep us here much longer. No better than it. We could rot here. I reckon no one would ever lose any sleep. Maybe they got something special lined up for us. Yeah, like yellow fever or the plague or something. Eddie reckons they're planning a big offensive up... Ah, up. Eddie reckons... Well, he said he got it from the Sarge. Oh, I'll bet that, Eddie. Look, he's got the biggest mouth in the whole flaming army. One of these days, someone's going to shut it for him for permanent. Why don't you ask him? Ask who? The Sarge. Ask him what? Ask him if it's true. The Sarge knows as much about what's going on as we do, and that's nothing. Oh, there must be some purpose in keeping us here. Yeah, probably some bloke behind the desk forgot to fill out our requisition order. Not that I'm hungry to get in the fight, hmm? It's just this sitting about waiting. Yeah, well, I won't be sorry to see some action. I thought you'd seen enough on the way here. Oh, real action, I mean. Well, that was real enough for me. Yeah, I know you, boss. You're not a bloke to sit in the sidelines. You want to get into it just as much as I do. Only you're worried. You're worried about me. Well, who wouldn't be? Look, I can take care of myself. Anyway, if I do go, you can be sure of one thing. I'll take a few jerrys with me. Not around here, you won't. Around here, you won't take nothing with you but flies. Now, how many flies does it take to equal one jerry? There's a question you might ask Eddie York. You can bet your boots he'll know the answer. Having fun, McCready? Hey? Oh, good night, Sergeant. I was just counting my fingers for one or something to do. When we get tired of that, I'll start on my toes. Mm. Well, you'll need them all before we're through. Yeah, you reckon? <laughs> Trouble with you, boss. You've got no patience. <laughs> Since when have you got so much? Since I heard we're being moved out tonight. Hey, you're kidding. I'm just telling you what I was told. Yeah, by Eddie York? By Lieutenant Wagstaff. Hey? Did he say where we're going? No. 
just that we're moving out. But I got a hunch something big's in the wind. There's talk about a new offensive in the Balkans. I thought you never listened to Tuuk. Not any York's kind. This comes from higher up. Ah, you begin to interest me. Well, I can't vouch for it, of course. Still only talk. But I'd say there's an even chance of it being right. Is this just between us, or can I mention it round? No, you better not. Wouldn't want to get the hopes up for nothing. If it's true, they'll know soon enough. If not, well, there's no harm done. Tonight? That's what he said, but keep it to yourself. Gee, so Eddie was right. By the law of averages, sooner or later he had to be. The Balkans. Where's that? I don't know. Somewhere up there. Up where? Up the Flaming Creek. How would I know? Think I'm a blooming geography book or something? Well, you ought to know anyway. Didn't your mother teach you? Oh, I forgot most of that stuff years ago. Big help you are. Come on. It's time for chow. Oh, that's how it was, sister. We was all of us clutching at straws. Even a Sarge. What happened to the ship you were on? Didn't you say she'd put in for repairs? Oh, she left us behind. Sailed a week or two before. Now, that's another thing that had us guessing. How we was going to get out. And how did you? Well, a couple of ships came in that same afternoon. They packed us on board and off we went. Mm-hmm. Why? Oh, I'm coming to that. None of us knew what was cooking, but it looked like the Sarge was right about something big being in the wind. Finally, word came through we was going to make a landing on enemy territory. <laughs> you should have seen some of the boys. They was wild with excitement, like a mob of school kids going on a picnic. And young Danny, he was as bad as the worst of them. By Christ, we'll give them some curry, boss. The blokes are just rearing they go. Oh, we'll take them apart. Yeah, and Eddie York, he's got the Kaiser all set up, I bet. He's going to deal with him personally. <laughs> well, he'll have plenty of company. Oh, Danny, when are you going to grow up? What do you think this is anyway, a pleasure cruise? We're not going to just walk in and take over. Oh, you never know. Surprise attack. We might catch them with their pants down. We might. Then again, they might catch us the same way. Oh, look, I, I don't want to dampen your spirits, but we don't know what we're getting into until we get there. And whatever happens, there's a few of us going to be left behind. I don't want you to be one of them. Oh, take it easy, boss. I told you I'd stick with you. Yeah, well, just simmer down. Let Eddie York and his pals be the heroes. We'll be there to catch them when they fall. Hard to put into words, sister. But I had a feeling about young Danny. He was he was wild and reckless, and I don't think he ever knew the meaning of fear. Not in its true sense. He must have been very fond of him. He was more than just my son. He was my best friend. Oh, well, having to go into battle must have been bad enough in itself, but when you have someone else to worry about, someone close like Danny, it must be a million times worse. I reckon I never gave much thought to the possibility of stopping a bullet myself. I was just scared for him, scared sick, thinking of his mother back home, of what he meant to her. How old was he? Nineteen. Well, just a boy. Most of them were just boys. I was just about the oldest in our section, and I'll tell you, I felt me age. Every day it felt like I had another year. But Danny, he seemed to get younger. He did his best not to show it in front of me anyway, but he couldn't wait to get cracking me. He was fair jumping out of his skin. And how long were you at sea? Oh, I suppose about a week. Inside of land most of the time, but whether it was ours or theirs, we'd never clue. We could have been sailing up the east coast of South America for all we knew. And one night we dropped anchor. It was too dark to see the shoreline, or even if there was a shoreline. There were other ships, we knew that. How many or... What they was up to was anyone's guess. You still didn't know where you were? We didn't know a thing. The blokes were pretty quiet that night. The edge had worn off their excitement. Some of them were starting to get the jitters. You could see it in their faces, till by the way they talked. But not Danny. He was right on top, riding the crest of a wave. Well, this is it, boss. Tomorrow I'm tipping, we'll be in the thick of it. Yeah, maybe. Somewhere out there. 
wonder if they're expecting us. We'll know when the time comes. Yeah, well, if they are, they're keeping pretty quiet about it. What do you expect? Community singing? Well, we can't be too far offshore. Wouldn't they open fire? In the middle of the night, be your age. They can't see us any more than we can see them. Oh, I'd certainly like to know where we are. If you did, it probably wouldn't mean nothing. No, just to have some idea, I mean. Greedy. Well, there's the Sarge. He might know something by now. Uh, you, you want me, Sarge? Yeah. We've been moving in at dawn. Oh, that official? Yep. It's a score. Is Jerry expecting us? It's not Jerry. It's the Turk. Mm. We hope he isn't, but he might be. You see over there? Mm. It's a beach. That's where we're going to land. We'll try to. Where are we? What's it called? A place I never heard of. Gallipoli. on the map. Cattleman, a Grace Gibson radio production. <laughs>